Hi Hornets! Hey Gators! So you saw our last episode that we posted on YouTube and Google Classroom and you know that we're going to try to give you some experiences, um, whether that be farm tours or uh, do-it-yourself projects or we don't know, we're figuring it out as we go. But today we are taking on our first official adventure, our ag venture, and we're very excited about today. Any guesses on what we're doing? Want to tell them Mr. Liebeck? We are going to the Cranick Dairy Farm. We are. So uh, probably quite a few of you Enumclaw kids have heard that name or have actually met the Cranicks in person. For the Decatur kids, probably not so much, but they're a local dairy, <laughs> they're a local dairy farm family um, and pretty influential in our community. Enumclaw's a, a pretty big dairy community, maybe not so much anymore today, but it's still part of our history. So we're really excited. They're really uh, innovative and really a huge, uh, I don't know, they play a huge role in the dairy industry. The dairy industry, uh, ag they're communities. huge ag advocates. Yes. And um, so, all around great people. Mr. Liebeck ran into Miss Cranick at the grocery store and uh, pitched our idea, and she welcomed us with open arms. So, we're really excited to get you uh, some airtime with Miss Cranick on their dairy farm. And Miss Norton commemorated the occasion with special t shirts. Yeah, oh, or bumpy. Watch the road, man. Uh, <laughs> Anyways, we have, it's pretty close, we're getting near, so we're gonna answer last video. We asked you guys to send us questions for either one of us to get to know each other better for my students who don't know Mr. Liebeck and vice versa, um, and questions of anything. It was pretty open-ended, so we didn't get many, so we're gonna encourage more of you to ask us questions in the future, but we did get a couple. The first one was um, how we first met, you know, if you paid attention to the last video or if you've known us longer that we met in high school. Do you want to tell the story of how we met? Sure. <laughs> um, we were in Mr. Clinton's welding class together. Yes. Um, I believe we were even in the same rotational group. We were. And that, you know, ended about midway through the year when I got kind of asked to leave the shop because and I caught myself yes, on fire. Yes. So the teacher was like, I'm a first year teacher. Uh, I don't need this. Um, we're just gonna let you do some leadership activities in the classroom for everyone's safety. Yes. Yeah. And that's kind of how it started. Yeah, it was. And um, I was a girl in welding class and so I didn't know many people. So I took any friends I could get. I didn't know it's gonna stick around this long, but we became really good friends um, when we attended our first state convention together. I was a freshman and you were what, a junior? junior? And again, I only had like one kind of friend and I was super shy, I still am. Um, and Mr. Liebeck uh, took, us, took us, he was less shy and less took us shy. under his wing. He walked around the Pullman campus uh, saying, come on little freshman and we followed. I don't know why, it worked out pretty good in the end. So that's, that's how we met was through our ag class in high school and FFA. Um, the other question we got was, what's your favorite type of farm or your favorite ag product? And I don't know, that's tough. I think... I think I'm, I've always been kind of a dairy kid. It's um, a lot of work. Well, I mean, when I was little, I got my first dairy heifer when I was in third grade and I showed dairy cows for eight years of 4-H. And then recently I've got into dairy goats, so I'm just gonna roll with dairy. 
I think my favorite farm, what I hope I have one day, is a Christmas tree farm. I love Christmas. Feeding trees sounds a lot easier than feeding cows every day. Or goats. I do like dairy, I do like goats, but I think a Christmas tree farm is my favorite type of farm. And I think my favorite product would be, I think I'm going to go with apples. We are the apple capital. Apple capital. What's apple your favorite capital. product? Product? That's a tough one. I'm going to say meat. Meat? I love meat. Meat. Okay, well, I'm going to flip the camera around and uh, we're almost there, aren't we? We are. We it's are. just coming up here. And then we'll introduce look you. Look at that blue sky. Look at blue that. Blue sky. Yeah, that's icky. That. Get a shot of look, that. Okay, let's get it. Let's show them what we're up against. Blue sky, that's what we want it to look like. <laughs> yucky. Not Mr. Liebeck. He's not yucky. Maybe a little bit, but yeah. So, anyways, we'll turn this thing back on when and we. That's our first stop. That's right? our first stop right there. I, you tell me you're leading this adventure. It's kind of blurry. She said to stop in a farm two first. Farm two, yes. They have multiple locations. So I think this is farm two right here. Coming up on <laughs> we're the we're about to find out. And if not, we might have a restraining order by the end of this. We'll see. <laughs> Okay, we told you we would update you when we made it to the dairy. We made it. We made it. And at this dairy today, what are we gonna do, Mr. Liebeck? We're gonna go on a milking tour of the parlor. Uh, we're gonna learn about nutrition, um, some of the compost from cow poop and how it's made into fertilizer. Yeah. Um, and then basically how milk gets from the cow to your glass. A lot more goes into it than most of us know. Um, we're gonna have some special guests and we wanna start with the, the superstars, ladies. the ladies. Look at all these ladies out here today, working hard. Are we ready? Ready to get Let's started? Do Let's hey. do it. Um, like we said, we are here at the Cranick Dairy. And we're very fortunate to get an inside look at what goes on at the Cranick Dairy. Um, because not a lot of people get an inside look and they're actually not open for tours. So we're very lucky that Leanne let us come take a look. Yes. So Leanne, to start our tour, uh, what are we going to see today? What are we about to see? Well, first of all, thanks for taking the time to come out. And hello, everybody. <laughs> um, this, Like they said, this is an inside look at our farm. Yeah. And so we're going to go into the parlor next and see how the milk gets from our cow into the bulk tank so it's ready for the milk truck to pick up take to the processing plant, and then at your store. Now keep in mind, all of this takes 48 hours, so we're fast. So we're gonna give you a fast tour. A fast tour. And Leanne, I think Liebeck and I heard you're one of the lucky last remaining dairy farms out there. We don't have many left in Enum Claw, is yeah. that true? Unfortunately, we have about 14 farms left on the plateau, um, but you guys being in agriculture, we need more farmers. So if something like this interests you, please talk to your ag advisor or you can contact me to direct and we'd love to teach you. We need some next generation of farmers because um, the average age of the farmer in King County is 60 years old. So we really need you bad. And I don't want to be doing this when I'm 70. <laughs> I'm going to need somebody else to make my food, right, you guys? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so let's go see if this is All something right. you might like to do. Here in the parlor. Leanne, what's going on in here? So this is the milking parlor at one of our farms at Granite Dairy. And this is called a double para. We can milk 12 cows on a side at a time. Milking a cow takes about 10 minutes. At our farms, we do it three times a day. So how the cycle works, we'll milk our, the whole herd. It takes about seven hours. And then we'll walk the pipeline for another hour and then we'll start all over. So it's a continuous process. We have five days a year, 20, uh, 24-7. Um, so here in the background, you can hear behind me a little kit with the milking machines on. You might hear this pulsation. side to side and she'll fidget a little bit this is a comfortable time for them you'll see they're not fidgeting if you look around you'll see a lot of cows chewing their cud and as you know cud chewing is a sign of bringing the cows to the cow. oh. 
milking so Avell is putting on this is called a post dip so this is a combination of betadine and lanolin and what it does is it's a barrier block so it stops any bacteria from going up inside their teat canal and then the lanolin helps keep their teat in smooth we don't want any chap skin um, dry chap skin is a harbor for bacteria and that's not a good thing to have ship from our farm gets tests for bacteria so it's it's a clean 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 operation so how does a milking machine work if you look inside these are we have four of these and most people think that that this heavy metal part is what goes on a cow when in actuality it, this is what it looks like inside caitlin put your finger in there and tell me what you see the smooth really gentle movements yeah, no, it doesn't hurt at all. No, it's kind of relaxing. Yeah, and that's kind of the like way a we, massage. Yeah, that's, I know. We we want our cows to feel like they're at the spa. Yeah. If somebody comes in and is real pushes too hard or makes a noise, it's not very relaxing, right? right? So how these work? These soft rubber liners get squeezed by an airline, which is right here. And so what happens? There's a definite happy medium. So what happens, Miss Lane, if you're drinking a really milkshake at the drive-in and you suck the straw too hard. Then the straw you can get any milkshake through. Exactly. Yeah. So what happens on the flip side if you don't suck it hard enough? You don't get your milkshake. No. So there's definitely a happy medium with our cows too and the dairy farmers. That's really important. So after the milk comes out of the cow, it goes down through this white hose and down in the pipeline. And let's go in next and we'll show you where we're going. And that's where the milk comes to next. Comes to next. Okay. And, then and from there, this unit right here is called a plate cooler. Mm -hmm. And so we have a cooling mechanism outside that's full of glycol, and glycol runs through all these little hoses in here. So the milk will go over the top. As farmers, we need to cool that milk from body temperature of a cow, which is about 101. 103 degrees down to at least 37 degrees for the milk tank to take it. So that's what this does. From there, it gets piped through up in the menagerie of pipes, and it's going right into this tank right here. So each of these tanks holds about 3,000 gallons, um, which is pretty amazing. Each cow milks about seven gallons of milk every day, so there's a lot to keep track of. It's our responsibility as a farmer to cool the milk. So um, once the one when the milk truck comes at night to pick it, pick it up, he takes it right to the processing plant. The processing plant will pasteurize it. They'll homogenize it. Do you know what homogenizing is? I do. Tell me. Okay, homogenizing is basically in simple terms. Correct right. me, right? If I'm wrong. But we, we mix it up really, really high speed. And what it does is if you don't homogenize your milk, you get a layer of cream at the top. And when we homogenize it, it makes it all uniform. It's evenly broken up, blended up, the cream and the liquid to yeah. one consistent texture. And what happens to keep the fat separate is when you homogenize, you break the milk up into smaller particles and the proteins of the milk go around with the fat particles. So every drink of milk, whether it's 1% or 2%, it's the same. The same. Yeah. Yeah. Very important. So here's the two. That's all we do on the farm end for the milk parlor side. Um, and let's see what we have next, shall we? Ooh, we shall. Let's oh, go. Yeah. Cool. Okay, we're at the second location, and what do we have here? So, in order to make milk, as you guys know, you have to eat, right? So, being a, having a nutritious diet for a dairy cow is very important. As you all know, they eat about 100 pounds of feed a day. So, when we have 1,300 animals, our menu is pretty 
pretty big. We feed about 80 tons of feed um, every day here. So imagine something bigger than Costco. That's kind of how <laughs> it works. So, and being a farmer, um, as you guys know, you've done budgets with your animals. Uh, costs to keep those low are very important. And so one way we do that, we mix our own feed here. So what's cheaper when you go to, a, is it cheaper to buy cookies from a fancy bakery? Not that they're bad. <laughs> it's <laughs> or, definitely more expensive. It is. And it's, so it's cheaper to make them at home. And we try, we keep that same, same nutritional value. So Jordan, you mind if I show you what we see here? Let's do it. Okay. The cool thing about all this, you guys, is all of this comes from Washington, and some of it's really closer to home, closer than you may think. So this is the furthest ingredient right behind us. So these are bales of alfalfa hay. Most of those come from Moses Lake. And we test each load. Um, every field is a little bit different, as you know, for protein and fiber. So next on the menu, sustainability. Oh, big word. Oh, do, do you guys know what that means? What does that mean, Mr. Liebeck? It's when you produce things in an environmentally friendly way so that you have the lowest um, carbon footprint. So doing things the most ecologically friendly. Um, and, and so that lasts a long time. So you reuse things and recy basically recycling organic products into the next. Yeah. Yeah. And, and dairy farms, I think farms and farmers in general are always real real sustainable. We don't waste They invented anything. sustainability. Right? That's why they have holes in their overalls. That's right. <laughs> and We're they drive beat up trucks. <laughs> it, yeah. Keep it going. We try not to. So we have our alfalfa, and that's that comes from eastern Washington. But the rest of it is either stuff we make here or we get a little creative. So let's walk over here for a second. This looks like a big batch of oatmeal. Mm -hmm. So, but it's milk kind of bitter. Sour, kind sour. of a sour. Yeah, sour. And, but there's definitely grain in it. I mean, I just, I just love the, the smell of that. What this actually is, it's called spent grain. And spent grain is what's left over from making beer. So when they make beer, they, it's just like making homemade oatmeal. You boil a big pot of water, you put the grain inside, in this case it's barley and some hops, and you boil it, you pull the water off, that gets used to make beer, which has starch in it, but what's left over, the breweries can't keep. So we have a fleet of end-up trailers, and we work with about 20 breweries, and we pick up this mash that we call it, and the mash is actually 9% protein. Wow. So it's a pretty good source. And do the cows get any side effects from eating the mash? <laughs> no, there's no side effects. And let me tell you Because you know guys, they would ask that. You are. We found a literal pie. We did. And did you know on the on the farm we feed a lot of bakery to our cows? Do and you really? We do. And so whenever I eat a lot of pastry, I always get nice and fat. Especially it's, in quarantine. Yeah, <laughs> isn't it good? It, it adds to your waistline. But when you're a lactating dairy cow, it's important to have, add fat to your diet. And there's a lot of bakeries in Puget Sound. Some make pies, some make cakes, cookies. Uh, but we can take all of the apples and the flour and the pastry dough, and we can feed it instead of corn. So instead of getting our corn from the Midwest, we can cut down the carbon footprint on fuel. So that all goes back to your sustainability. Exactly. My favorite S word. <laughs> We looked at the grass silage, the alfalfa, the spent grain, the bakery byproducts, and so this is the final product after it goes through the giant kitchen aid. This is so yeah. This is this is what we call our cow ration, and if you look at it, it doesn't taste like pie. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's not something that we like to eat, but they think it's delicious. So more power to them. But if you look in here really close, you can see the little bits of spent grain. Of course, the green is your alfalfa hay. They're um, the black, if these little black bits of grass, that's our grass silage that we grow here on the plateau that comes in those big uh, white or green marshmallows. And then this little tidbit right here, this Jordan, this is your bakery, that's their fat. So mix it all together. Each cow consumes about 100 pounds a day and it's a balanced diet for them to keep them happy and healthy. Awesome, and they seem to really like it. They do. We don't hear too many complaints from our girls. <laughs> Have you ever drove by a field that looked like it was filled with marshmallows? Well, behind us, we have those marshmallows. If you remember, at 
the farm uh, where Leanne explained how they mix cow feed and make their own with a recipe, she said that grass silage was one of the ingredients and that they keep it in these marshmallows. So this is what it looks like when it's all wrapped up before she mixes it up. And do you remember how they mix it up? With the giant KitchenAid. Yeah, they, it's a big machine. We're gonna show you some footage of one in action right now. And it mixes all of the ingredients up to an equal consistency with that giant auger. Yeah, that so turns. it takes, takes the four ingredients of alfalfa, silage, um, spent grain. grain, and the baked goods, the pie, and it mixes it up all one consistency so that the cows get a well-balanced meal and they don't just pick out their favorite parts. Because everyone would pick out the pie. We would pick out the pie. <laughs> so we have our next special guest, Mike Cranick. And so what do we have here? That's a J. Lore mixer wagon auger. A what? <laughs> uh, a huge Vegematic, a vertical screw. Um, J. Lore mixer, mixer auger. And it, what it's designed to do, we're, I'm, I'm, the final phase is to build the sweep. That's picture a picture a five eighths thick steel floor below here. This turns with a, with through the help of a giant gearbox, and, and, and feet actually moves up. So it's this. the blade of the kitchen aid, right? <laughs> right, more or less. It, that's it, what we talked about over there. And it just it just keeps boiling feet up to mix all of our our ration ingredients together to get every bite the same, and uh, it was worn out. We're, we're plating new uh, AR, which is a, a abrasion resistant metal plates on it to, to get more life out of it right now. That's awesome. So, almost finished. Looks good. I have a question. Um, why fix it? Why not just go get another one? A, a new one is about $6,500. That's that's worth the fix. So, <laughs> yeah, I thought so too, and that's um, we got it welded down to a welding table, and have a nice shop to work on it, and, and uh, more steel to cut out the stencils that we need to, to fill in, and, and uh, yeah, I, I my wagon that we're putting this back in, we just put a new floor in it, and, and uh, um, we figured that the, the number of loads it's used so far is about seventy one thousand loads. Okay, and I have one off-topic question. Not all of our students and viewers are FFA members, but a lot of them are. Do you have a background in FFA? Does yep. it connect to now? Yep, I was, I was in Enumclaw High School FFA so I, for all four years. And, and uh, state farmer, um, wow. went on to Wazoo, got a, a Bachelor of Science degree in Animal Science, minor in Ag Econ. Um, I was the chair of the, the CUDS Cooperative of University Dairy Students. That's awesome. So, what are you doing in agriculture? And agriculture now, what are you doing in our industry? We have, my wife and I have two dairy farms uh, milking about 1,300 cows. And then we lease uh, another three retired dairies to raise our, our young stock and, and house our, our dry cows. Oh. And we, we farm about, oh, 1,250, 1,300 acres, so. That's awesome. So let's talk about poop. Where does all the poop go? Well, we get a lot of milk from cows, but for every gallon of milk, you get one gallon of manure, too. So that's a lot, but actually poop is my most favorite thing to talk about. Mine, too. <laughs> and it, it has to do with the other, we talked about my favorite S word, sustainability. So let me show you what we do here on our farm. And if you step back for a minute. So all the manure on our farm goes, um, it's pumped through these orange hoses. And then it goes through in here. Inside one of each of these separators is a screen. And so it'll take any particle of manure, one millimeter and larger, and put it in the hopper. The liquid goes back into our lagoons, and that's what we have to store in the winter months, but we'll take that liquid in the summer and fertilize all of our fields to help get grass. So it's the solids are in there, rotating in a green in vessel composter. They're there for three days at about 160 degrees, so it dries down the cow manure, um, kills any bad pathogens like salmonella or E. coli, and it and um, this is what comes out. 
It's called a bedding master. It's made in linden. And this is what we actually use to bed our cows with so we don't need to buy shavings or straw. Now the cool thing about this, when you buy shavings or straw, we talked a lot about expenses. Right now, uh, wood shavings are about $12 a yard. So with the cost of this machine, it costs us a little bit to run it, but not that much. Um, it's sustainable and we can keep it going. Now the other cool thing I like about this, cow manure makes a great soil amendment. So for all you gardeners out there, this material from our farm helped grow the third largest pumpkin ever grown in the world that weighed 2,363 pounds. So as you can see, cows not only make milk, beef, leather, and a bunch of other things, but they're all part of that great wheel that we call agriculture. So we've seen a lot of cool things today. The milk parlor. The feed. The feed. I like the KitchenAid. I didn't know they had that. That's pretty make crazy. A lot of cookies. That's, that's a lot um, of cookies and pies. Before we go, though, I do have another question. Have you ever drove past a dairy and seen those, like, white huts that out look in like the... dog igloos yeah the giant dog igloos what, what are those those are calf huts and those are where the heifer calves are kept heifer calves why do we keep them in there so that they're isolated from each other in quarantine just like you guys um and it allows them to grow at a more even rate um they're not competing with each other for food and other resources um it shelters them from the elements and it'll and if one of them's sick it's not gonna get the other one sick so, do you think they're happy in their calf heads? I don't know. Let's oh, ask. Oh, there's one there. Hi. Wow, these are big. Leanne was telling me earlier that you could actually see a whole family of four for dinner in one of these things. That's how much room there is. And it looks really cozy with all that sh the straw in there. Um, I would definitely sleep in there. Yeah. It keeps the straw dry so they don't get wet and cold in the nights. I wonder and if it gets hot. What do you think? I think that in the summer it would probably get hot, but Leanne said that in the summer they put shade paint over the top to keep things cooler in there. Oh, nice cozy temperatures. That'd be nice. But it, that opaque color holds the heat in for them during the winter. What else do you have in here? It's like a good supply of fresh water. What's that? And some calf grain. Calf grain. Two bottles a day. What do you think? Five stars? Do you like your hut? She'd totally eat here again. I think that was a two, a two lick like. Two lick like. Hi, sweetie. Okay, thanks for letting us visit. Hey, I had so much fun. Thanks, Leanne, for welcoming oh. us on your farm and showing us around. You're, you're very really welcome. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, you're very welcome. Anytime. And I want to tell all you guys, this is not the end of our conversation. This is the beginning. So if you have any other questions about dairy, please reach out to your ag instructors or um, they'll put a link to my Facebook page um, on the bottom. But feel free to ask us questions anytime because the best source of information is not Google, it's a farmer. Well, that concludes our first tour. I had a good time, how about you? I had a blast. What about you guys? Did you like it? What'd you Leave think? Leave us a comment. Leave us a comment. Tell us what you thought. what do you think? What was your favorite part? What, what would you like to see in the future? Yeah, what was your favorite part? I think I liked looking at the poop stuff. <laughs> stuff yeah i liked the baby cow she was cute and don't forget to subscribe to our channel subscribe to our channel united by ag with liebeck and norton <laughs>